champion. But these are the Olympic Games. He has been to the podium before, but not to the top. Many have come with aspirations of gold, and in the men's original program, Peter Barna showed the way first. Victor Petrenko then fairly flew to the top. At the end of a beautiful skate, America's Todd Eldridge took himself out. And the quiet American, Paul Wiley, made a very big noise. Christopher Bowman hoped for Dr. Jekyll, but he got Mr. Hyde. And the champion got a chance to look at things from the other side. The men's gold medal, Petrenko and Browning, tonight. These folks among the 9,000 fortunate in possession of one of the more desirable tickets at the Olympic Games, the men's free program. And on the ice right now, the Olympic Ice Hall, 25-year-old Gregorz Filipowski from Poland. Gregorz, a veteran of the Olympic competition, 12th in Sarajevo in 1984, 5th in Calgary in 1988. Very difficult jump here at triple axel. Not quite high enough to control the landing. Filipovsky in 13th place entering the free program. And Gregors was devastated by his original program placing. He was third in the world in 1989. He had a serious foot injury and he's been trying and trying and trying to come back. Filipowski, a native of Łódź, Poland. He has lived in Rochester, Minnesota since 1985. His mother and dad, Kristen and Christina, still residents of Łódź. They live in a tiny four-room flat, a kitchen, a living room, a very small bedroom, and one room given over to the presentation of all of Gregor Filipowski's skating trophies. for a long time. After the league trophy, he just wanted to pack it in, but he decided, I want to compete in one more Olympic Games. He went on later that year, later this year, to win an NHK trophy, and it really gave him a lot of confidence. He faltered in the original program, but he should be pleased after the year he's had with this long program. Later tonight, Petrenko and Barna, and Wiley, and Kurt Browning. The current standings after the free program, and the Americans, in addition to Paul Wiley, Christopher Bowman, and Todd Eldridge. He has such great personality on the ice. And great personality off the ice. His coach is Barbara Kosowska. Like Gregor's, a native of Woj, Poland, she too, with her husband's big new, lives in Rochester, Minnesota. Gregor's is Filipowski's nickname is Triple Filipowski, and this is why. I think he was 12 years old and just whipping off triples. Now the marks for Gregor's Filipowski. Nine judges, perfect score is 6.0. Hi from the Japanese judge. The most important thing about this performance was what it meant to Gregor. She's been through so much in the last few years, and for him to come back and just say, I don't care where I place, I want to compete one more time in the Olympic Games for Poland. Very emotional experience for he and his coach, Barbara Kozowska. And that is Barbara, the recipient of the kiss from Gregor's Filipowski. Now the second set of marks 
for artistic compression. And these go up. Greg Orsch is a great personality skater. He loves the crowd. He loves working the judges. He wants to stay in the United States, turn pro, and do exhibitions. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist. Welcome to the Olympic Ice Hall for the men's free program. Four and a half minutes alone on the ice. It counts for two-thirds of the total score. The men's gold medal will be awarded tonight. The current standings have Victor Petrenko in first place, Peter Barna second, Paul Wiley of the U.S. is third, and Kurt Browning of Canada is fourth. And any of those four could win the gold tonight. Eight years ago, tomorrow night, Scott Hamilton won the gold in Sarajevo. Scott, as much as anybody in this building, I think you have a sense of what this moment means. It's an unbelievable feeling for every one of these men going into the free program. This is it. Everything you've ever wanted and dreamed and hoped for happens tonight in four and a half minutes. All the jumps are important. All the spins are important. Your presentation is important. When I think back to eight years ago, adrenaline took over for me. It was a flawed performance, but I still got away with winning the gold medal. For Kurt Browning, a tough original program. For Victor Petrenko, a great original program. This has been an intense rivalry. When you look back over the years, a great rivalry means that you take turns winning. But Victor Petrenko has never had a turn beating Kurt Browning and winning the world championship. Maybe this is his turn, but I got to tell you, watching that original program the other night was an emotional experience for me because when you watch Kurt Browning go up for that triple axle, it got a little bit too big. Adrenaline took over, too much height, no way to control a landing. And when you go into the free program and you know that every one of your Olympic dreams happens tonight, this performance impacts everything you do for the rest of your life, and it is big. Victor Petrenko, Kurt Browning, Peter Barna, Paul Wiley, each has a dream. They'll skate later this evening. We'll be back right after this. The games are not just about the pursuit of medals. They're also about the competitive nature of these athletes and the spirit that brings them to the games. And David Liu of Taiwan exemplifies that spirit. This is the first time he's made the cut, placing in the top 24. He was allowed to do the long program. And David really represents a dying breed in skating. He is one of the best artistic skaters in the entire field. Representing Taiwan, David Liu has lived in New York City since he was six years old. He's now 26. Father passed away in 1988. His mom lives in New York with him. She speaks very little English. And his coach is a very familiar name to Americans who follow figure skating, JoJo Starbuck. skaters because he struggles with the landings of his jumps. He usually gets in the air pretty well, but it's the way down that he really has the trouble. But he's a great artistic skater. There are dreams within dreams. And there's a dream come true for David Liu. He has competed on Olympic ice. And a thrill for his coach, JoJo Starbuck. And this is what makes him so special. The expression, the posture, the extension. He may never be competitive for a medal, but David Liu skating isn't something that you just watch, it's something that you feel.
fight for it. Hey, thanks. Goodbye. Good fight. And the first set of marks now for David Liu. Well, he struggled with the landings of his jumps. And the judges reflect that with their marks. But this is not his strength. If he ever gets the jumps down and accomplishes a triple axel, watch out. JoJo Starbuck on the left, David Liu in his first Olympic Games. And the second set of marks. And these go up, but you know, it seems like if the ISU, the ruling body over skating, wants people to be more artistic, they should reward artistic skating. David's a great artistic skater, and they really should reward him for what he accomplishes. That's his other coach, Sonia Dunfield. Four years ago in Calgary, Brian Boitano won a gold medal in this competition. He's standing by with a third member of our commentary team, Tracy Wilson. Brian, tonight a new men's Olympic champion is going to be named. What kind of pressure are these men under? Well, you know, Tracy, it's a culmination of many years of mental training and physical training for all these skaters, not just the leaders. And one strategy is to try to pretend it's just a world event or just a national event for them, but they know in their hearts it's the Olympics, and it's very important. Okay, in Calgary, you and Brian Norris are skated back-to-back. -to -back. Tonight, Kurt Browning and Victor Petrenko are. How do you think that's going to affect them? Well, you know, I think it was different for Brian and I. There was a little bit more pressure because we knew that whoever won the free skating event, they would be the gold medalist. For Kurt, I think that he has a lot of pressure because he has to win this event. He has to win the long program to win the gold. And for Victor, he should be a little more relaxed because he has the lead after the original program and he has to place only second in the long program to win the entire event. Brian, is it tough for you to sit and just watch these guys out there skating? It is. I really want to lace up my skates and be out there. But there's an immense joy to see someone like my ex-teammate Paul Wiley skate so well in the original program, and I'm, I'm rooting for my American. Thanks, Brian. In 1988, it was the Battle of the Bryans. Tonight, it's Victor Petrenko and Kurt Browning. The nation which Victor Petrenko called his own is no longer. The Soviet Union has ceased to exist, yet Petrenko skates on, and winning the Olympic gold medal would change his life in ways most of us can only imagine. Tonight, Viktor Petrenko controls his fate. The gold is in his grasp. Browning grew to manhood a half a world away, a small town in rural Canada. His skating and his freedom have brought him wealth and fame and the pressure of living a very public life. Tonight, two men, two friends will compete for an Olympic gold medal. Three-time world champion, Kurt Browning. Two-time world silver medalist, Victor Petrenko. I have to do all my programs very clean. And uh, I think the people who watch me will happy to see my skating because I don't think it's too bad. <laughs> For Kurt Browning, a lifetime of work is on the line. I have an opportunity to be a part of history. And um, I've already, you know, had my fair share of history in figure skating, but I hate to leave things unfinished. I have an opportunity to win the Olympic gold medal, and I'm going to do everything I can to do it. Two men, two friends, but only one gold medal. You think he's wide-eyed now? Imagine what he'll be like in 18 years if he's competing for gold. Well, that's to be determined, but we do know that coming up when we return, Americans Todd Eldridge, reigning world bronze medalist, and Christopher Bowman, the current national champion, will skate. In the heart of downtown Alberville, the Hotel Million, one of the finer hotels in the city, and about five minutes away by car, the Olympic Ice Hall. We're back for the men's free program, and on the ice right now, 20-year-old Todd Eldridge of the United States, ninth coming into the free program. And his opening move 
a triple axle, his most difficult jump. A little forward on the landing. two-time national champion, but he has been hampered by injury since the latter stages of last summer. He set out the U.S. National Championship for the back injury, was given a place on the team because of his status as the reigning world bronze medalist. After that triple loop fall, his triple X is very important, and he hangs on to a nice landing. In the original program, of course, landed the most difficult jumps and then slipped on a double axle at the end of his program. A little bit of a sigh of relief. Todd is the son of a commercial fisherman, John, who still lives and works in Chatham, Massachusetts. Mother Ruth is a nurse. She's out west with Todd while they train in the San Diego area. It seemed all week that Todd was just trying to catch up with a back injury that kept him out of the U.S. Nationals. Stamina was the biggest factor. It was his biggest concern coming back for this Olympic Games. Double axle, I think he wished he had in the original program. Knowledge technician, but says he still needs a little work on his choreography. And he looks a little tired here at the end part of the section. You see his arms are coming down. Looks like he's breathing through his mouth. And that's tough. And he's got some jumps coming up. And when you don't have any strength left in your legs, it's really hard to pull them off. You can really see how tired he is on the landing of that last double axle, which was a single axle. It was meant to be a double. He just didn't have the strength to pull it off. His head went back. In all the earlier performances that we've seen tonight, it just seems like the ice is giving way a little bit. Seems a little slow, and that could be a factor in the quality of the later performances when it comes down to deciding the medals. What year old Todd Eldridge? Twice a U.S. national champion, his first Olympic experience. But there's Lillehammer yet to come in two years. Well, he's so young. To be at this level, at this age, and this accomplished is just amazing. No one really knows what Todd's potential really is. Another look at the triple axel. This is the one that his injury was not allowing him to do. You'll see three and a half revolutions. Good air here, 
Just a, he almost touched his hand down, but decided not to. The original program, he missed his double axle. I bet he'd do anything to have that one back. Nice double axle there. Now the first set of marks for Todd Eldridge. And these are somewhat disappointing, the 5 O's from the first two judges. That was definitely not a performance that was representative of his talent. Again, he's coming off an injury. You can see at the end of his program, he was just a little bit tired. His arms were coming down. This was meant to be a double axle. He just don't have the strength at the end of a program, four and a half minutes long, to be able to pull off those difficult jumps. And the second set of marks based on a 6.0 being perfect. Well, the judges obviously felt that he was stronger artistically tonight than he was technically. All in all, Todd's got to look ahead to Lilyhammer. Kurt Browning will be skating later this evening. He's just arrived at the Olympic Ice Hall. He's standing by with Tracy Wilson. Unbelievable. What did you and Dewey and Neva and Dina do on your day off yeah, today? How's your day today? I spent uh, lunch with my family today, and um, we just sort of talked about everything that's been going on, and um, we talked about the short, and we talked about shopping, and, uh, and fought our way through uh, ordering French, and, and didn't get what we wanted, but we ate it anyways. <laughs> and uh, we just relaxed, had a good time. Are your parents pretty relaxed with everything? Uh, no, I think they're nervous, yeah. But they're excited, too. I mean, it's not like we haven't been through all this before. So uh, it's just uh, it's just more exciting because it's got the rings on the ice. So uh, I think they're having fun. My sister at the last moment said, ah, I'm going to go. So she uh, she hopped on a plane. She's here. So it's good. good. Thanks, Kurt. They're having fun. He looks remarkably relaxed. Yet to skate from the United States, Christopher Bowman. The 16th Olympic Winter Games on CBS are sponsored by at the Olympic Ice Hall in Alberville, the men's free program tonight. Next Friday night, Midori Ito of Japan expected to battle Christy Yamaguchi of the United States for the ladies' gold medal. Recall that wonderful battle of the Bryans four years ago in Calgary? They're both here tonight. Brian Boitano won the gold, Brian Orser the silver. With two silver medals, Brian Orser has left his own indelible signature on the sport. these guys here that are the best in free skating um, probably go after the same sensation that I did and that was just that feeling of flying uh, taking risks you know throwing yourself as high as you can in the air you know the Kerb Brownings and the Victor Petrankos and the Christopher Bowmans um, when I was sort of at my peak they were just coming in and, and uh, they were the new kids on the block they were the young whippersnappers with the triple axles and the triple axle combinations and the second triple axle in the program, um, you know, I would, it, I'd be very flattered to think that I had some sort of influence or impact, impact on their careers. As a competitor, the, the key people to entertain are the judges. That's what you're thinking all year when you're putting your programs together, and the audience is there and they take that in. You know, they can enjoy it too. When you're here at the games, you've got to really, um, you're so focused. Figure skating at this level, the Olympic level, is sport. Because what these athletes have to deal with is, um, is this incredible pressure. And that's where the sport comes in. Throughout the games, I'm just getting all these flashbacks, <laughs> one after the other. You know, I, I was part of the opening ceremonies in Calgary, and I carried the flag in. Well, when I watched here, um, I got a lump in my throat when the Canadian team came in. And the Olympics magnifies everything. Olympics is the really the one event that lives up to its billing. <laughs> you uh, grow up wanting to be in the Olympics and it's, uh, it's so big. On the ice right now, 20-year-old Vyacheslav Zagorodnia. Skates in the shadow of his teammate, Victor Petrenko. They share the same coach, Galina Smietskaya. And of course, Petrenko going for the gold later tonight. Triple X. 
Wetzel coming up very late in the program. You're tired, it's difficult. No problem. Only difficult for some. One thing that has held Vyacheslav back in the past is his choreography and presentation are done with very little speed. What he has is jumps and one of the biggest triple loops in the competition, and he pulls that one off nicely. Four minutes and 30 seconds in length, two thirds of the total score in men's figure skating. Nice performance for a young man who was born and raised by the Black Sea in the Ukraine and chose to skate to the music of an American composer, Richard Rogers. Slava Zagorodnyuk, or if you don't know him well, Vyacheslav. A very difficult jump late in the program. Look at the height and air position. This is one of his best jumps, a triple axel. His triple loop, he normally gets a lot more height but he still he has so much control in the air, a little forward in the landing, but nicely delivered. Now the first set of marks for Vyacheslav Zagorodnya. And these are very high. This rink has been very good to him. He came here for Trophy La Ligue, the pre-Olympic event last November, skated the performances of his life. It's obvious that he's very comfortable in this building. He pulled off two beautiful triple axles, skated very well. On his left is Galina Smievskaya, who is his coach, has been for most of his life. She also coaches Viktor Petrenko. On the right, Valentin Nikolaev, assistant coach. Now the second set of marks for Zagorodnyo. And these go down. His artistic impression is not his strength. His choreography is not done with a lot of speed. A lot of the steps are pretty simple, but he's a great jumper. It is the biggest night in the life of two young men this evening. Slava Zagorodnik's teammate, Viktor Petrenko, who's in the building, and American Paul Wiley. They both will be among those skating later on. <laughs> February 15th, 1980. Eric Hyden of the United States skates in the 500 meters at the Lake Placid Olympics. It is the only race in which he is not the favorite. He wins and goes on to capture four more gold medals. Eric Hyden, the only man in history to win all five speed skating events at a single Olympics. James, one of the newer buildings in this old town, the Place de la Rope, an art center on the main avenue through town. We've talked tonight about how Kurt Browning can go from fourth to first in the men's free. I'm sure some folks are a little confused, Scott. Why don't you help us out? Well, it is possible, but the best way to tell you about it is to probably show you. All the scores are thrown out after the original program. They give you what is called a factored placement. They multiply your place times 0.5. Now, what's important here is when they multiply the free skating total, it's twice as much as the original program. It weighs very heavy. One point to the first place, four points to the fourth place. Now, let's see where our current standings are now. Victor Petrenko stands at 0.5, Kurt Browning at 2.0. If Kurt Browning wins the long program, and he's going to have to, his total will be 3.0. If Victor Petrenko is second, you will see that his point total will be 2.5. Victor Petrenko would win the gold. But let's say that Victor Petrenko is third in the free program. His total would be 3.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.
3.0, Kurt Browning would win the gold. But in order for Victor Petrenko to be third in the free program, somebody has to get in there. Let's say it's Peter Barna. Peter Barna is second in the free. Two points are added. Three points is total. But if you look, he and Browning are tied. Browning, by the strength of the placement in the free program, wins the gold medal. Barna is second. Petrenko is third. Now let's say Wiley comes in second. You'll see his factor placement total is 3.5. 3-0 goes to Browning, he wins the gold. Wiley the silver on the strength of his free skating performance, and Petrenko drops to third. So going from fourth to first is very possible. Well, among those who will not have a chance for a medal tonight, though he came here with high hopes, Christopher Bowman, seventh, entering the long program. The United States national champion. with triple jumps. The only one he's struggled with all week is a triple axel. The next most difficult is triple lutz and it's coming up right now. He vaults with a right foot. Now comes the triple axel. He missed it in the original program, but it's been getting stronger with every practice. The rest of the program is within his control. Slight turn on that triple axle. Shouldn't be much of a deduction by the judges. complaining the other night <laughs> and it was a late arriving crowd and they were out getting Euro burgers so they couldn't get into it. A very difficult combination but it's not for Chris Bowman. Triple flip into triple toe. Triple flip, triple toe. Uh, here's a young man, uh, subject of so much controversy over the years in the States. His mother, Joyce, and his father, Nelson, are here watching him, by the way, tonight. Such enormous promise. I'm reminded of something that Kurt Browning told us back in September. When they were both adolescents, Kurt said, and I saw Chris Bowman skate for the first time, I thought I would never, ever beat him. Browning with a chance for a medal, perhaps the goal tonight. And for Chris Bowman, only the satisfaction of entertaining this audience and moving up in the standings. championship performance for a lack of speed in his performance. He's really improved that in the break between the Nationals and this Olympics, and he is really on. He knows where every camera is located, and he will find every spectator in this building. The last triple in his program is coming up at the end of this footwork section. He's going to build speed now. The end of his 
program. He's very tired. Triple flip. And he cannot hang on to the landing. Almost a clean performance for Chris Bowman. His longtime coach, Frank Carroll, is here. His second coach, Tuller Cranston, is here. And his current coach, John Nix, is here. And they are among those who appreciate the performance of Christopher Bowman. Seventh in the Olympics in Calgary in 1988. At the very least, he would like to better that here in Alberville. so talented. The lift and speed he jumps with is just incredible. Look at this triple flip. He'll keep the flow on the landing and just pop an easy triple toller. Oh, you enjoy that? And his coach knows how great that was. I had a great time. That, was great that is John Nix. Now the first set of marks for Christopher Bowman. And these are pretty good if he would have controlled the landing on that triple axle, and if he wouldn't have fallen on that triple flip, those marks would have been a lot higher. Chris is probably the most talented on, performer I've ever seen, but when you're out of gas, you're out of gas. That's an easy jump for him. I don't think I've seen him miss it all week. And the second set of marks. And these do reflect the improvements he's made since the national championships. He skated with a lot more expression. He let Bowman, the showman, come out a little bit more, and the marks reflect that. Right. Yet to come, Peter Barna, the current European champion, and Paul Wiley of the United States. We're back at the Olympic Ice Hall in Alberville. Peter Barna of Czechoslovakia is one of the men favored for gold. Peter told me that despite the economic hardships in his country, he's better off than ever, and that is because the government is now paying him directly. In the past, the government would pay his association, who would then in turn pay him. But he found he was getting only a little bit of the money allotted to him. Now he has the funds to pay for costumes, for ice time, and for lessons. For Peter Barna, the last year has been one of many changes. Every morning, 25-year-old Peter Barna kisses his wife Andrea goodbye and heads off to an ice rink in Prague for what is sometimes a two-hour commute by bus and subway and trolley. Life as an athlete in communist Czechoslovakia meant intense to win a medal. When Peter failed to do that at the Calgary Olympics, he was sent home in disgrace by Czechoslovak officials. So they get me in the plane at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I went home, so I didn't see any of Olympics. The recent democratic changes in Eastern Europe have given Barna a new outlook on his career. It makes a very big difference because I can I can feel that I'm more free and I can, how do you say, I can spread my wings and fly away. Freedom means a chance to buy a chance. Yes, All it takes is a corona and a dream. Uh, I buy lottery. Uh, I believe in luck. You can win car or m some money, but mostly you don't win. If I win million, I'm lucky. Nothing. Peter and his wife are expecting their first child, and so Europe's number one figure skater is hoping to turn pro later this year. Mm -hmm. When Peter takes a rare afternoon off from training to shop for the baby with his wife, they stop in Venceslas Square at a memorial to those who died for a free Czechoslovakia. I think it's a good thing to have a child now in Czechoslovakia because everything is changed and the baby can live uh, 
our parents or we did. But when night falls, Peter is right back at the rink, working on those jumps and perhaps for those wings with which to fly. I want to finish my career with the medal. This is one of my dream. If I do it good, it will be good memories for my life. If not, what can I do? <laughs> life goes on. It will be on this ice in this rink that Peter Barna's fate will be determined. Right now on the ice, 19-year-old Stephen Cousins, representing Great Britain, now a resident of Sun Valley, Idaho. I've gotten to know Stephen very well this year. We skated a lot of exhibitions together in Sun Valley, and to see him from the beginning of the summer to the end, his expression and consistency skating in front of those crowds has really helped him. Stephen being coached by Alex McGowan, who was Debbie Thomas's coach in 1988. Slight two foot landing in that triple lutz. And usually the first question he is asked when introduced is, are you related to? And the answer is no, he is not related to Robin Cousins, the 1980 Olympic champion. Triple, triple toe. Great combination. He knows how to relate to him. He's done enough shows in Sun Valley. His one weakness is a lack of a triple axel. bet they like that in D-side, North Wales, where he used to live. And in Sun Valley, Idaho, where he lives now. Stephen Cousins. Well, he struggled with his jumps, but one thing he doesn't struggle with is his audience contact. Great footwork, great posture, upper body extension. And he really plays the crowd. Now the first set of marks for Stephen Cousins. And these aren't too bad, 4-9 from the Italian judge, a little bit low, but again, Stephen, what he does, he does well, but he really needs a triple axle to compete with a better skater. Second marks coming up. And these should probably go up. He's got great audience contact. When you touch the audience, you touch the judges because they are a part of that audience. So the first Olympic Games for Stephen Cousins, yet to come, Victor Petrenko. Kurt Browning trying to jump from fourth to first. Paul Wiley of the United States. The Olympic Winter Games now continue on CBS. We're back at the Olympic Ice Hall in Alberville. The final skaters in the men's free program about to take the ice. By luck of the draw, here is the order in which they will skate. Ermanov will be first, followed by Kurt Browning, Viktor Petrenko third, Paul Wiley fourth, and Peter Barna 
will be the last. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Scott Hamilton. Scott, what, <laughs> beside your, your heart pounding, what does the order of skating mean to these men now as we get close to the, uh, the final skate? We're going into the original program. Victor Petrenko really put the pressure on Kurt Brown. He skated first, he skated great, he got great marks. He, he laid down the line for, for Kurt Brown. He went into the original program, he made a mistake. Maybe it was a pressure, who knows, but now, Kurt Browning skates before Victor. They skate back to back. A great performance by Kurt Browning could really put the pressure on Victor and make him doubt himself and put more pressure on himself could affect his performance. Of course, a lot of the focus is on Browning and Petrenko, and this is not to ignore the very real metal possibilities, gold or otherwise, for both Paul Wiley and Peter Barna. Well, it's Olympic pressure. You don't understand Olympic pressure unless you've been there. And any one of these guys, a, a mistake early in the program could affect the rest of their performance. Paul Wiley's been skating great in practice. Peter Barna has been skating well in practice. For Paul Wiley, he's never really put together a big competition. Either he's great in the original or great in the long, but tonight, if he can put it together in both programs, he could win a medal, possibly gold. And how about Peter Barno? Peter Barno has been very relaxed. He does not have a triple axle. He's going to have to hit the quad toe loop at the beginning of the program to be a factor. But who knows? Flawed performances open doors. Four and a half minutes alone on the ice. The gold medal is up for grabs. Victor Petrenko, will he be the man? Kurt Browning, can he come from behind? 27-year-old Paul Wiley, can he skate back-to-back -back great performances? And 25-year-old Peter Barna of Czechoslovakia, can he win his first Olympic gold? The 16th Olympic Winter Games on CBS are sponsored by... 18-year-old Alexei Ermanov from St. Petersburg. At the pre-Olympic event, Trophy La Ligue, he won the free program. Kurt Browning won the competition, but Alexei won the long program, partially because of jumps like this, a triple axel. Alexei Ermanov skate. Really notice how fast he spins in the air. Next jump is a quadruple toe loop. No problem. Almost touched his hand, but nobody spins faster in the air. That will count as a completed quad. Absolutely. Nobody's been close to a quad all night. Technical scores, if he stays clean, the rest of the performance are going to be great. Well, he's 18 years old, and that's the fifth quad he's landed. Make you feel good? Makes me feel great. I'm glad to be sitting here. Being 18, Alexei still hasn't developed a real clean, mature line. But for 18, he's very good. He will be considered a very definite medal contender in 1994 in Lillehammer. Triple sow cow. Nicely done. Now 
St. Petersburg. Mother and dad are divorced. His mom worked as an engineer in a Red Army factory, which just a couple of weeks ago was closed down. And through the stipend he receives for skating, he is supporting his mother, grandmother, live in a small flat. Very difficult times for those who live in what was the Soviet Union. Difficult combination now, triple flip. Uh, doubled it. Triple toe loop. program the judges only count what you do there are no requirements but when you're in a group of men like this one you need all the ammunition you can fire First Olympic Games. It won't be his last. Alexei Ermanov. The 18-year-old from St. Petersburg. Nobody else in the world does a quad as easily as Alexei Ermanov. Four revolutions in the air. One, two, three, four. Slight touchdown of the hand. He's amazing. He also has a quadruple Salcal, and his coach told me the other day it isn't over. And now the marks for Alexei Ermanov. Well, that 5'8 reflects the quad. The rest of them are very high. He didn't do all that much. What he did, he did pretty well. It wasn't a loaded program. Just call it packed. <laughs> Alexei Ermanov, his coach, by the way, Alex Mission was Tamara Moskvina's pair partner. And Mission and Moskvina won a fifth place mark in Grenoble in the Winter Olympics in 1968. And the second set of marks. Well, these go down a little bit. He's still young. He doesn't really have that rapport with the audience yet. He doesn't, hasn't really completed his line and his choreography. It's going to take some time, but he's got a great foundation to work off of. He enters tonight in fourth place. When we come back, Kurt Browning continues his quest for gold. Gold medal favorite coming in. One slip on the triple axle in the original program. He's in fourth place, but he does still have gold medal aspirations. He must win the free program, and then someone else must beat Victor Petrenko. Here is Kurt Browning. The choreography in this program is very interesting. Impressive. His first jump at Triple Lutz is one that he's recently put back in his repertoire. Nicely done. The next combination of jumps is the combination he missed in his original program. Triple axle into triple toe loop. Forward takeoff. Watch the height in the air. Again, it looked like it was a little bit too high. He could not control the landing. He cannot afford to make any mistakes from now on. Can he still win this competition, this portion of it, with that slight slip? Only if he believes he can. He cannot let that slip get to him. If he feels it's over right now, it is.
He went into the triple ups last night with pressure, and he went into this one tonight with pressure too. Nicely done. Kurt's parents and his sister are here. His dad, Dewey, is a rancher in Caroline, Alberta. He's the superstitious type. In the Lyon airport the other day, he found three coins that he said were good luck coins. After what happened to Kurt in the original program, Dewey found a wishing well today and threw two of them in. He still got one in his pocket. can only take you so far. The rest comes down to luck and timing. Spiral, triple flip, and a step out on that one too. It's really gonna be difficult for him to win the free program and have somebody else become, come between he and Victor Petrenko. His hardest jump coming up at triple axel, and he singles it. Is it over? I think it is. Double, double, that's been triple, triple all week. I think he's giving up. Coming into this competition as a three-time world champion, you'll never know what kind of pressure that is. For him to sustain any kind of concentration this week had to be impossible. Any color medal for any other athlete in this competition would be just great. But for Kurt, anything less than gold has to be very disappointing. His father, Dewey, seems uncertain. So does Kurt. Among the telegrams Kurt received after his fall the other night was one from a four-year-old named Lisa. She said, I fall on the ice all the time, too. It's okay. It doesn't hurt. Another look at the triple axel, triple toe. He gets great height. When you get this kind of air, sometimes it's difficult to control the landings. Almost a carbon copy of what happened in the original program. But when you make a mistake and you've got to come back, and it's a jump you're not used to doing in front of people. Shows his guts right here. Triple Lutz, double toe loop. He fought, but was it hard enough? Now the agonizing wait for the marks. Thanks. And Petrenko waits as well. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Kurt Browning acknowledging the large number of Canadians who were here. Paul Wiley checking his composure, trying to stay calm. Just hold it. Now the marks for Kurt Browning. He's got to consider these marks disastrous. One five eight from the Canadian judge, a five three from the Australian judge. This building has not been kind to him. He struggled through Trophy La Ligue. Here's a jump that I think broke his back right here. 
Triple flip, he couldn't control the landing there. And after that, I think he realized it was over. Fatigue might have had a lot to do with this. A triple axle turned into a single. Yeah, Scotty, it did. <laughs> Kurt uh, overheard Scott, just said, yes, Scotty, it did. Now the second set of marks. And the program is a great program, five eights. It's really interesting, it's really intricate. He's a great, expressive skater, a wonderful crowd skater. What a rough night for a fantastic champion. And of course, that opens the door not only for Victor Petrenko, but also for American Paul Wiley and Peter Barna. And next on the ice, leading after the original program, 22-year-old Victor Petrenko. It is now his medal to take home. And you know that Victor Petrenko heard those marks, and he knows what that means. He knows that Kurt struggled. And knowing he has some space, he might relax, but he can't, because there's still two skaters coming up after him that could really challenge. His opening moves, triple axle into triple toe, triple axle, triple toe loop. It is now his medal to lose. Browning and Petrenko, longtime rivals, longtime friends. Another very difficult combination, triple Lutz into triple toe. He'll reach back with his right foot. Three revolutions, a little tilted in the air, and he doubles the second jump. Very smart. He's challenged himself on takeoffs. Triple flip, and he comes out forward. Triple loop doubled. Chinks appearing. I think so. He knows he has room. He opened up his program fine, but he cannot hold back. He cannot let his intensity and his concentration down because Paul Wiley has been skating very well, and so is Peter Barnum. Victor Petrenko has had a horrible fall. By that, I mean autumn. Problems with his boots. He finished third in his national championships, only second behind, behind Peter Barna in the Europeans. And what a step up the ladder that would be. Victor's wearing on his feet an old boot and a new boot. Usually when you break in new equipment, you do it all at the same time, but he couldn't get used to the new boots. So on his takeoff, his left leg, he decided to keep the old boot for control and wear the new boot for strength. Attempting to become the first Canadian to ever win the men's gold medal. You can tell he's tired. His arms are coming down. And this late in the program, he has actually planned another triple axle. 
and he cannot hang on to the landing. He is letting the door open for Kurt Browning. trying to become the first skater from what was the Soviet Union to ever win the men's gold medal. So we have not been blessed with the best of performances from either Browning or Petrenko. This kind of pressure being at the Olympics and knowing this is probably your one shot at a medal. Another look at that triple axle, triple toe. Not nearly as good as the one he did in the original program, but you'll see the height. Beautiful triple axle, and he just barely made the triple toe loop. And everybody's been struggling with fatigue. You have to think it may be the ice, but the triple axle at the end of the program, just not enough. He could not hang on to the landing. And now the first set of marks for technical merit. Five eights are very good marks, but five sevens and five six, there's a lot of room left. Lorena Mievskaya on the left. And there is room for both Paul Wiley and Peter Barna. And his second mark, five nines. He's a very expressive skater. That program he's had for three years, he's very comfortable with it, a very good solid routine. Those marks are much better than Kirk Browning's. And that puts Victor Petrenko into the lead at the moment when we come back. 27-year-old Paul Wiley, currently in third place. These are the games of the Winter Olympics on CBS. We continue now with the men's figure skating competition. Paul Wiley has competed in 11 U.S. national championships and never won. He's been to four worlds with ninth his best finish. He made this year's Olympic team by one-tenth of one point. And tonight, he can take home an Olympic medal. There is so much room. The marks of Viktor Petrenko may or may not have been gold medal winning marks. And to think that Paul Wiley was a controversial selection to the Olympic team. A lot of people felt, send Mark Mitchell, he's our future. Paul Wiley had his chance. Now Paul Wiley has a chance to win an Olympic gold medal. Triple flip. The next jump is crucial. It's a jump that he's been landing so well all week. The triple axle. Yes! The next most difficult jump to a triple axle is a triple lutz. Nicely done in a double toe loop. Jumper is also 
brilliant artist. Triple Sal, a little slip on the landing there. That's not one of his strongest jumps. on this jump. There can be no hesitation. Triple axle. And he lands in a little turnout. Given his lifelong reputation as a runner-up, will Petrenko and Browning's reputation help them with the judges and perhaps hurt Paul Wiley? Well, I think a lot of the judges have put Paul Wiley on a whole other scale than Victor and Kurt. Paul has got to skate the rest of the program clean to have any shot. Great footwork here, and a triple toe loop. Nicely done! And his last jump, a double axle. Every Olympic performance impacts the rest of your life. And this Olympic performance will definitely impact Paul Wiley's in the most positive way. Yamaguchi, Nancy Kerrigan, his American Olympic teammates. After the original program, I thought he had his shot, but everybody thought I was crazy. Triple flip at the beginning of his performance. Look at how nicely he landed that. And this triple axle, look! At the quality of this jump, forward takeoff, three and a half revolutions, perfectly straight in the air, total control. Yeah. He is absolutely beloved by the figure skating community. Not just in the USA, but throughout the world. Evie and Mary Scott Bold, his coaches, flank him as Paul Wiley waits for the first set of marks. And if he wins this competition, this has got to be the greatest and biggest upset in figure skating history. One man still to skate, Peter Barna, European champion, second after the original. He waits and we wait, and here are the first set of marks. He's severely undermarked. Paul does nothing poorly. He does every 
everything well. He jumps well. He presents himself well. Great artistry. I thought that the judges might look at him in a whole another class, but Paul Wiley is definitely not in another class. Another look at that triple axle double toe at the end. A slight turnout on the landing, but his mistakes were not as serious as the ones that preceded him. And now the marks as Evie Scottbold reacts. The second set of marks for Paul Wiley. And these are great, five nines, five eights, five sevens I think are low. Yeah, What a great performance, that will be enough to have him beat the world champion, Kurt Browning. It may give him a silver medal. For the moment, that places him behind Victor Petrenko. Let's join Tracy Wilson, who's with a disappointed Kurt Browning. Kurt, it's hard for us to imagine how you're feeling right now. Have you had a chance to think about it? Can you share your thoughts with us? I'll probably wait a year before I even think about today. Um, it's unfortunate. I just didn't have the time to get ready to compete. I think uh, when I was out there, I didn't feel my normal competitive self. Um, the program, I tried to do run series before I left, but I didn't have very much time. And uh, I was like, the first couple run series that I actually did any triple triple at all was this week. And I think I just didn't have enough time to get my concentration back. And unfortunately, uh, it caught up to me out there. I just uh, w was having thoughts I don't usually have and uh, just lost the edge, sort of. What kind of thoughts were you having? Was it that you knew you had to be perfect to win? Oh, winning was the last thing on my mind. I just wanted to, to curl up and see if I could get a medal. Um, you know, everyone puts so much emphasis on winning. This is my Olympic Games. I wanted to have a positive experience, and um, I'm disappointed that I didn't skate well. And when we come back, Peter Barna of Czechoslovakia will be next to skate. In 1988, in Calgary, representing Czechoslovakia, Peter Barna finished 15th. His federation was so angry, they put him on a 6 o'clock plane the next morning and packed him off to Prague. Now he's back as the European champion, second place going into the free skate. Peter is very popular with the European judging community because he is so artistic and expressive. He is possibly in the best shape of his life. His opening move is a quadruple toe loop. He does not have a triple axle. And he does it two-footed, but he does the quadruple toe loop. Two minutes into his four and a half minute program. Victor Petrenko currently in the lead for the goal, followed by Paul Wiley. Where Paul Wiley's performance ability really impacts you. Peter Barnes lulls you. 
Davis certainly doesn't have the emotional intensity that Paul Wiley's did. This is still a new program for Peter. Skate America competition this year. He was disappointed with his free program. He heard this music, the soundtrack to Hamlet. He liked it enough to develop a whole new long program for the Olympics. Nice triple loop. audience of 9,000 after Barna's performance, especially with compared to that of Paul Wiley. <laughs> what might best be judged lukewarm applause from the audience for Peter Barna, Paul Wiley, is backstage watching with his coach, Evie Scottgold. Paul, who had made an obsession of getting to Alberville this year. Here's another look at his quad toe loop. Very rarely done in competition successfully. One, two, three, four revolutions. A slight touchdown on the landing. Still delivered. That's what skating has become. Paul Wiley knows he's won a medal. It's now a matter of what color. Now the first set of marks for Peter Barna. Whoa, a 5-9 from the Canadian judge with a fall. That's pretty high. Five sixes are more like it. I don't think technically he was anywhere near the, the same level as Paul Wiley. Three minutes and 40 seconds into his program, you're very tired. A triple flip at the end, no way he could hang on to that. Fatigue has really taken over towards the end of these programs tonight. Peter Barna, 25-year-old son of a Prague taxi driver. He and his wife expecting their first child. Paul Wiley watching the marks backstage. Abby Scottbold says it's good news. And here are the second set of marks for Peter Barna. Five eights, he's a great artistic skater. Five of the nine judges are from Europe. He's very popular here. Presented it nicely, but it just doesn't have the same emotional output as Paul Wiley, who's a great performer. Wow, oh my God. Paul Wiley has done it. That is so unbelievable. You got it, baby. He has Woo! won the silver medal. Olympic medal. I don't get it. This is too much. This is too much. I wanted it for you guys so badly. When we come back, we'll talk with Paul Wiley and Victor Petrenko. It is now official. Victor Petrenko has won the gold. And Paul Wiley of the United States, the longest of shots, has won the silver. Tracy Wilson is standing by with an ecstatic American skater. Paul Wiley, in your wildest dreams, that did you ever imagine evening. you'd win the silver medalist? No, I have no, I, I had no idea that I would be second here. I'm so psyched. I don't know what to do. I'm, I just, I was shocked when I was third, when I thought I'd be third, and now second. I'm going to be, I'm going to see my flag go up. I'm so excited. I just, I can't, don't know what to say. Have you dreamt about a moment like this? 
Yeah, but I always woke up too soon. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this is a dream for me, a dream moment. I was 11th in the world last year, and I moved up nine places to this. And um, I've I worked hard for it this year, but this is beyond my expectations, and I'm psyched. Congratulations, Paul. <laughs> Thanks. Here's the way the top 10 wound up in the 1992 Olympic Games. Christopher Bowman, a fine performance in fourth Todd Elders of the United States, winds up in 10th position. Chris Bowman, Scott, quite a comeback in the free program. Well, he's got nothing to be ashamed of. He didn't win a medal here, but all in all, he performed pretty well. Last year, fifth place finish in the World Championships. This year, fourth in the Olympic Games. He's a great performer, and he really turned it on. And it's really funny, you look back on his year, he won Skate America without a coach. A lot of controversy surrounded him. He went to the national championships. A lot of people felt that it was a lackluster performance. Nothing wrong with this one. Two-time national champion Todd Eldridge, only 20 years of age, missed the national championships this year with a back injury. He was given a spot on the Olympic team because of his status as a reigning world bronze medalist. Well, we had three skaters because of Todd Eldridge, and he proved that his back wasn't a factor. He skated as well as he could, but in Lilyhammer, he'll be a lot stronger. Tracy is down with our gold medalist, Victor Petrenko. Victor, you finished second twice in the world. Last year, you were very close. Now, you're the Olympic champion. Can you put into words what this means to you and how you feel? Yes, you, you're right. I was twice very close to win, but uh, uh, I didn't win yet. And at this moment, I was more closer than usually I, I, I had before. And it makes me more nervous than before. And maybe that's why I did a couple mistakes in my long program. But I feel happy because the all's over and very good for me because it's my dream to be an Olympic champion. Victor, now that your country is free, and you are free, and you're an Olympic champion, what are you going to do? Well, I think I will turn to prof professional, uh, just do the exhibition. I don't know yet for sure. I don't think a lot about it. But I think I will turn to pro. We look forward to seeing you in North America. Congratulations. Thank you. Kurt Browning of Canada, the three-time world champion, began the night with hopes of gold, but the aspirations were dashed early on with a disastrous evening. Kurt Browning fell from fourth to sixth place. Victor Petrenko of Odessa in the Ukraine, held up under the tension of a gold medal evening. Though skating a slightly flawed performance, he used his athletic ability and artistry to win the gold. Peter Barna, the 25-year-old expectant father from Prague, performed well enough to win the bronze. He came with a dream of a medal. He leaves with that accomplished. But the night really belonged to 27-year-old Harvard graduate Paul Wiley. Paul was the longest of shots when he came to France, yet he won the applause of the crowd and memories for a lifetime in leaving Alberville with a silver medal. Paul Wiley of the United States. And thanks to Paul Wiley, we saw another happy surprise in men's figure skating. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow night.